welcome back to my channel. Today is the start of sugaring season and uh, this is actually my first year that I'm going to be tapping some maple trees and I'm super excited but uh, just a fair warning I'm not a professional. Um, I am learning so I am open to uh, constructive um, comments if you have any throughout the video. Um, please feel free to share your knowledge with me. Um, I love to learn and uh, so if you've seen some of my other videos you know that we just bought this house. We just moved here. We've got about 40 acres and um, we have quite a few maple trees. Um, unfortunately only I think one is a sugar maple. Um, I've got a couple red maples that I'm going to tap, and then the majority of my maple trees are silver maples. So, um, not the best per se, but I'm still excited, and I think it's going to make um, some great maple syrup. Super excited. I've got all of my gear ready. Um, I've been watching the forecast for the weather in my area and waiting for the temps to go up. Um, much like a lot of the country right now, we've just been hit over and over and over with huge snowstorms and it's been really, really cold, um, negative, you know, up to like negative four, I want to say. Um, but anyways, it's been roughly in the low 30s, mid 20s for the most part and um, during the nighttime in the negative. So, um it's been really really cold and in fact we just got hit by another snowstorm last night we probably got about six to eight inches last night we've got a ton of snow um, but um, I will try to remember to include a picture of my weather forecast um, for this coming week and today it's um, a high of 34 so not super hot <laughs> not super warm um, but um, so about 34 and then tonight it's going to drop down below freezing again in the 20s, uh, I believe upper 20s, and then it's going to be going up to the 40s tomorrow is what they're calling for. So we've got several days um, in the upper 30s to mid 40s during the day and um, in the 20s at night. So um, it's looking like the majority of the next seven days is going to be like that. So that is um, prime time for starting to tap the maple trees. Um, we're super excited. My son's going to come along and help me. And uh, I'm just going to bring you guys along for the journey and uh, to show you how I'm doing it. Hopefully um, it's helpful to you. Hopefully it's encouraging to you. And uh, hopefully it... it um, gets you maybe wanting to go out there and tap your maple trees as well. So let's go ahead and grab our spiles and our buckets and our drill and all of our gear and get trudging out through that snow. Luckily, most of my trees are pretty much right around my house, not far from the house. So we don't have to go too far. Um, I am going to bring a measuring tape too because I haven't measured. There's a couple trees that I'm not 100% sure if they're big enough and I just want to make sure I don't want to injure any of my trees. So I am going to bring a measuring tape and make sure that they are 12 inches or bigger and some of them, um, most of them are definitely big enough to do two and even three taps. I've got some huge silver maples. Um, but there is a couple um, I'm not sure as well and I just want to make sure that I can do two taps and um, so I'm just going to bring my tape measure as well. But I'm going to take you through the whole process of me, how I'm tapping my trees, the, the um, spiles that I'm using, the equipment that I'm using, um, how it's working for me, show you what kind of sap that I'm getting from silver maples. Maybe you have a lot of silver maples and you're not really confident that you're going to get a good product. So um, I'm going to show you what I get from my silver maples, my red maples, and the sugar maple that I have and uh, kind of show you if there's a difference in quantity of sap or anything like that or how long I get sap from them. And then um, I will take you through how I'm storing the sap until I cook it, um, what I'm using to cook it, how I'm cooking it, 
and all of that to the end until we get some syrup. So um, I'm not going to post this video right away until I've gone through all of um, these steps, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy the ride and I'm going to go ahead and grab my gear and get out there. All right, so we got four taps in so far. I have a total of uh, 10 spiles, but I only have six buckets. But I knew that I could double tap a few trees and one tree in particular, I'm planning on triple tapping it. So, cause it is huge, um, but it is cold <laughs> and it is windy. And really the sap's not running yet. So I figured I'll just wait until tomorrow, but we started to get cold. My son's super, super duper helpful. He was uh, carrying all my buckets, my tools, and, and being really helpful and helping me film and stuff like that. So I'm um, super blessed to have a little helper with me, and it's freezing out there. So we came in, and I have to get some chores done and things um, now before my husband gets home. And... Um, tomorrow we'll go and put the rest of our taps in. All right, so this is the next day, and wow, what a difference one day can make. It is so nice out. Um, I'm trying to actually shovel a little bit of the driveway here because we have so much compacted snow that I want it to all melt so we can be back down to the cement and it won't be so slippery and stuff. So I'm trying to give it a little bit of a head start, but... Uh, I'm sweating and all I have on is my fleece and a t-shirt and I got my sleeves rolled up because I am sweating. I'm so hot. It's uh, almost 40 degrees already and it's shortly after 9 o'clock in the morning. 
sun is blasting. It's so nice. It's uh, refreshing from a long winter. So um, kids are doing chores and when they're done, we are going to go and look at our taps and see if anything's happening yet. Maybe I'm jumping the gun and it's too early, but I'm anxious and I just want to see. So we're going to go and check that out here in a little bit. So can't wait. bucket of sap today. About, this is a five gallon bucket so not too bad but I've only got two trees actually running right now so hopefully the silver maples start to run. This is all from the sugar maple and a little bit from this little red maple today so I'm gonna bring this in put it in the cooler and start saving up. So I think we're on day six since we tapped our first trees and we've collected, uh, I'm not exactly sure yet. I have to go and collect the buckets out there now, but I'm guessing we have around 10 gallons or yeah, about 10 gallons of sap so far. So we are going to start to boil this off. Um, we're out in the barn and I've got my setup. I'll show you what I'm using. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick filter as I pour it in to my pan and get it all set. And then we're going to go out and collect the last of the sap real quick. So today it's going to be pretty cold. So I am guessing we won't get any sap today. And um, tomorrow, again, it's supposed to go up into the 40s. So then we should be good to go with collecting sap all of next week. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'll show you um, what I'm using to boil my sap. All right, so this is the stove that I have to boil um, the sap. So like I said earlier, I didn't want to spend a bunch of money before I know what I'm doing and if I like it and if I'm going to keep doing um, tapping our maples. So I already had this propane stove. I got it at Walmart. It's got um, two burners and I guess I'm really just going to be using the one and I think over here I might put my uh, other pot, that pot right there, on there and maybe just preheat sap as I'm going to, you know, before I put it into there so that I don't lose my boil. 
Um, but so I'm using this steamer pan. It's a six inch uh, deep steamer pan. And uh, I got it off Amazon. And then to filter, I've just bought this. It's actually a honey filter. But I liked that I could put it on the buckets and filter easily. And it has um, this top part that comes out. So I'm going to... Um, first, I'm just going to probably filter it like this as I pour it in to get out any bugs or debris, things of that nature from the trees. And then later on, when I do a second and a, a third filter, I have cheesecloth that I'm going to layer in here. And I thought maybe the layers would be nice to uh, because the sap will start to go through so slowly that having it spread out might be cool. Who knows? We'll see. So I've got um, my sap right here so far. Got to go get the rest of it. And these are just... Um, the cheesecloth that I have, it's reusable, sewn around the edge so it'll last and I can reuse it. And there's a couple different sizes. I just kept it in the bag so that it'd stay clean. This is just my uh, my stainless steel pot from in the house. And when we're, I'll probably, like I said, use this to preheat the sap before I pour it in. And also when we get done with stage one out here, I'm going to pour the remaining in here and bring it in the house to finish it. So that's my plan there. I've got a ladle. I don't know if I'll actually need this out here, um, but I didn't want to need it and not have it out here. So um, that's just for scooping. And really I bought it to scoop into my hydrometer testing tube. And I just have a stainless steel little skimmer so that as it's boiling and foam or debris or anything I see, I can just scoop that off. So I think I'm ready to go. I'm going to get to filtering and get some in here and then we'll turn the burner on and go get the rest of our sap. Actually caught anything but looks nice and clean. <laughs> All right, so we are officially started. Um, I had the burner on warm for a little bit just to adjust the temperature to the pan a little bit slower and just from going to collect the rest of the sap we already had some ice forming on top so yeah it's pretty cold today no we're not gonna get any sap today but when I only had about a couple inches from yesterday um, right now I'm still only getting sap from two trees but as you can see we are positioned in the barn and I've got both of the barn doors open. And we're just kind of in, just inside the door to be out of the wind. Um, it's a little bit breezy, not bad. But um, I didn't want it to interfere too much with the flame and to cool off the sap too much. I just figured that wouldn't be very efficient. So we're right at the edge of the door. We might even close this door halfway or so because we're freezing. Um, but we'll see how long it takes. Um, I probably have about eight to nine gallons, I'm guessing. So we'll see how it goes. This is all sap, probably about 90% from the sugar maple. And, you know, about 10% maybe from the um, red maple that I'm doing. So, so I don't know why, but uh, we're on like day six now from when we tapped our trees the first time. And we've got just one sugar maple that was big enough to tap. I got one red maple that was big enough to tap and then um, the rest are silver maples. And I actually have two more taps, or two more spiles that I can tap. I was gonna double tap one of these silvers out in front of the barn. But um, I didn't do it because they're still not running. And I'm like, well, I was 100% sure that they're silver maples, but now I feel like I'm like 98% <laughs> because I don't, I don't know. I guess 
Um, the day after we first put the spiles in, um, the only one that started to run was the sugar maple. And then it wasn't until day two or three when the red started, and the red has definitely not produced as much sap as the sugar, but it is a lot smaller of a tree too. Um, but yeah, none of the silvers have um, started to run yet, and the silver maples are the one that I was able to identify when we first looked at the property um, because we thought, wow, those are really pretty trees. What are those? And I took a picture of the leaves. They actually had leaves at that point. So I was able to ID it with the leaves. And if I remember, I'll post a picture of the actual leaf. And uh, if I'm wrong, then you can go ahead and tell me. But uh, the leaf, it looks exactly everything, the bark, the buds, everything looks exactly as a silver maple so i'm guessing it's just got a shorter run season and uh maybe that's why and hopefully i mean it's still early um it's not even march yet so i've still got quite a while that uh, i can collect sap so um it's a bummer but it's not too detrimental there's still plenty of time for them to start doing their thing so um, I'm just going to sit out here. I got my partner, my son, and we're just going to hang around the stove and try to not freeze. And uh, our, our rabbits are in the barn right now, so we'll probably hang out with them a little bit and love on them. And yeah, I'll just uh, keep going. And I already st see some steam coming off the pan, so yay. Um, we'll just go ahead and, and hang out for the day out here. <laughs> So I'm, I've got this uh, almost full and I just have it on warm so that when it's time to add it over to the big pan I don't lose all of my boiling. But I've got this one on high and uh, it's looking good. It's getting a little bit darker and I've just been scraping off all the foam that builds up. But we've uh, right after I added it, I went ahead and almost filled it up, probably to about right here. So it's gone down about two inches. You can kind of see a line there where it was boiling before. But it's getting a little bit darker, as you can see, probably. I think you can see it's getting a lot darker in comparison to this. See how clear that is? So because this uh, is really just not boiling. But anyway, so it's doing good. I think I still have a long time out here. If I freeze to death, then that'll be an issue. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing this outside when it's 20 degrees. It, I'm thankful that I have the barn to be in because there's no way I could be out in the wind, but at least the sun is shining, so it looks like it's a nice day when you're inside. <laughs> But, all right, I will we'll keep you guys updated and we'll check back again when we're about to bring it inside. All right, so we are down to about one inch deep in there. And I'm going to say this is the end of phase one outside and we're going to go ahead and filter this and bring it inside to finish. Um, I don't want to get it too shallow in this pan so that it warps the pan or does any damage to the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it inside and finish it. Um, and then I've got my, um, I can test it and everything to make sure that it's perfect when we're in there. So I can really fine tune it. 
but um, I'm gonna go ahead and do so we filtered it lightly when we poured it in here basically just to get any uh, you know bark or anything from the trees that fell into it which really was was nothing but um, so now I'm just gonna filter it a second time in here and I'm gonna get another one of these so there's two sizes this is the smaller one so um, I've just got my my big pot sitting over my five gallon bucket so it's off the ground so I don't have to um, bend quite so far down to the ground and put my pan on the ground and then put it on my stove so this way my pan stays clean and I just put my um, filter here my my bee honey um, filter and since it has uh, this comes out I went ahead and put one of the cheesecloth between the layers and then I'm just gonna put a second one on top see how that goes hopefully the wind doesn't blow it away but then I'm just gonna pour it through here do a quick uh, second filter and then before we bottle it up we'll do our last third um, filter all right so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the stove off All right, so I just put the sap on the stove top and I put it on high and I just put this thermometer in there. It's a candy thermometer, so we're looking to get it up to about 219. And we're just gonna babysit it for a while and once it starts looking good, we'll just uh, randomly test it to see what we got going on. So right next to my sap, I just have another pot with hot water. The stove's not on or anything, but I put hot water in it. And I've got a wide mouth quart jar to put the syrup in, a lid and a ring so that I can um, seal it. I'm not gonna can it or anything, but. Um, and then I have my hydrometer to test our sugar levels in the syrup. And I have um, this test tube to put my sap in and test it. So um, I got these off Amazon. I wanted something that was made in the U.S. And this seemed pretty nice. So these are from Brewing America. And they are both glass. And so I didn't want to shock them by putting um, boiling hot liquid in there. So I put them in the hot water. And I'll probably turn this on once we're getting close and I want to test it just so um, I'm not putting hot liquid into cold glass. That's never a good idea. So I'm just going to watch this thermometer for a while and we'll test it here in a bit. But I'm, I think I got a ways to go yet. So. and we've got a good boil going so I'm gonna go ahead and just test to see where we at where we're at how close we are so we'll see if I can do this without spilling all over the place exactly sure how much how deep to put it maybe I should go a little deeper I don't want 
want to overflow. Alright. And we're going to get this. Alright, so as you can see, this is hot and this red line right there is where we are looking to get that to float right here on top. So as you can see, we've got about an inch to go. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this back in and keep boiling it and we're just keeping a close eye on it. syrup is done and we're going to go ahead and start to filter it over here. Let's see. Do I want it to be that thick? Yeah. All right. looks tasty all right so I just have the same setup but I have double the amount I put two pieces of um, cheesecloth here and two here so it's going through four layers plus the two meshes of the actual strainer so we're just this is our final filtration You can probably hear it running through there. And I'm just have it sitting on um, my other stock pot here, so. All right, so that is done going through the filter. Just gonna set these in the sink. I just kind of wanted to look and see if it caught very much sugar sand. Hmm. There was actually a lot more in the second filter. You can barely see anything in that, but in the second filtration you could definitely see some sugar sand. All right, so there we are. Oh, how well you can see it because the window light. So while it's nice and hot, I've got a warm ball jar here, just a wide mouth mason jar. And we're gonna just pour it in. Hopefully it all fits in this pint jar, maybe not. You might have to lick the bowl. <laughs> wow, that is, so we had about eight gallons, approximately eight or nine gallons of sap from mostly our sugar maple, a little bit of the red maple. And we ended up here with like exactly a pint jar full. And we're gonna definitely lick the bowl. I did spill a tiny bit. I kind of made a mess on the counter over here, testing it for the hydrometer. Kind of made a mess. It was my first time using that thing, so I kind of spilt all over the place. But all right, so I already sanitized my lids, my lid and my ring. So I'm just going to put this on here and tighten it finger tight. All right, and... Um, the heat from this will likely seal the jar. I'm not going to can it or anything um, because sugar and um, maple syrup and honey, things like that, really have an indefinite um, shelf life. So I am just going to keep it like this and it will naturally do its thing. But look how pretty that is. I'll hold it up to the window in the light there. Oh. If you can see that. Ooh, pretty. Man, and we literally, we, since I had it spilt on the counter, 
we stuck our fingers in it and tasted it and oh my goodness how amazing all right so we have maple syrup ah it's so cool um anyways um i hope you guys enjoyed watching me learn and make my own homemade maple syrup for the first time ever it was actually a lot easier than i anticipated and um really it seemed kind of hard to really mess up too much so um i'm really happy with how it turned out now i just need the rest of my trees to start running those silver maples are slacking um but i'm super excited i can't imagine if all of my taps are producing sap it'll be crazy um, I'll definitely be out boiling for a long time if they pick it up so um, yeah I I guess that's it for this video um, I'll probably make subsequent videos um, as I continue to monitor my taps and um, the amount of syrup that I or the amount of sap that I'm collecting and, and how much syrup I end up with in the end and when I take my taps out um, and all of that so um, if you're interested in tapping your own maple trees or or any tree really um, make sure that you continue to watch out for those videos in the future as the next like month goes by um, this wasn't really meant to be like a tutorial or a how-to or anything because it is my first time making maple syrup um, but I wanted to kind of document it and my experience and you know motivate you guys and give you guys assurance if it's your first time and you're not sure what to expect or you're nervous or you just want to see another new you know new person try you know their hand at it um hopefully my silver maples start to run and uh yeah i'll just continue to update with um, more videos as time goes by with the whole um process that i'm doing and i i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful and uh let me know what your experiences are or uh if you're gonna try it um let me know in the comments below i'd like to know what your um experience is with tapping your maple trees or or your walnut trees or whatever it is that you tap so um thanks for joining me today and i'll see you guys next time have a good day